the tragic end of the F2 freestyle is. I'll be honest with you, I didn't really watch these guys, so I don't actually care that much. My only context is some random clip where someone shouted Swaz or that Steven Trice kid. Other than that, I don't really know anything about these lot. But now we're gonna find out how they tragically ended. <laughs> what kind of Shakespearean drama is this gonna be? The downfall of the F2 freestylers. The F2 freestylers were once the most popular and iconic freestyle football duo on the internet. I'm pretty sure they were Everything the always looked perfect on camera, but behind the scenes, darkness ever. was brewing and everything they had built was about to fall to pieces. So what happened? How did the F2 go from being the most beloved freestyle football duo to splitting up and becoming the centre of many controversial debates? If you didn't know, Jeremy Lynch and Billy Wingrove dominated the freestyle football scene for years, working with some of the biggest brands and names in football. Yeah. Their creative football challenges garnered them a massive audience on social media, but unfortunately, it didn't last. To Dude. properly understand what happened, we Dude. have Dude. to go Dude. back to where it Dude. all started. Dude. Let's start with Jeremy Lynch. Like most British teenagers, Ask he grew up loving football. football. But it wasn't and until he play. saw an advert featuring Edgar Davids and Danielson that his love for freestyle football really developed. Two years later, when he was about 15 oh, years yeah. old, Jeremy allegedly played in the Arsenal Academy and was apparently so good that Arsene Wenger himself said to him, on the ball, you're the best at the whole club, yeah. including the first team. Yeah. But off the ball, you're one of the worst. Now, this statement came from Jeremy himself, and this story raised no a lot shit. of eyebrows. That's even in the video, you can tell on Billy's face that even he wasn't quite buying it. On the ball, you're the best at the whole club, including the first team. I was only 15 at the best. But they said, off the ball, you're one of the worst. <laughs> Especially considering the fact that the time Jeremy claimed the statement was made is around the Invincibles era of Arsenal. During the 2003-2004 season, when Arsenal won the Premier League without losing a single match. So if this statement were to be true, it would mean he was a better baller than legends like Thierry Henry, Patrick Vieira, Ashley Cole, Dennis Bergkamp and Robert Perez. I think you can start to smell something fishy. So how is it that Jeremy Lynch, a 15-year-old at the time, could be a better player on the ball than any of the players on the first team? Well, nice. in reality, no one is really buying this story, even if it was on sale for 99% off. Especially for Brees Mwamba, who also played for the Arsenal Academy oh, yeah. at the same time oh, yeah. Jeremy claimed to have been there. He's there on, you see, yeah, Fabrice yeah. appeared on Jack Mate's Happy Hour podcast, and when he was asked about Jeremy, said he had never even seen him on the Arsenal training ground. The year above me, he wasn't in there, and I know every single person in that year above me. He then even went on to show a team photo that Jeremy should have been in, but he was nowhere to be found. After this footage came out, the internet meme assassins slaughtered Jeremy. I mean, come on, man. How sad is it to lie about having played for a big club like Arsenal? Obviously, the truth was going to come out at some point. Jeremy may have lied about playing for Arsenal, but he definitely wasn't bad on the ball. And in his final year of university, he decided to make a life-changing decision. He went on Britain's Got Talent, where oh, he yeah. wowed the crowd and the judges with his incredible moves. And even though we all know the show is scripted, he managed to get into the semi-final, which had never been done he before by a footballer. Like a dog, and as you can imagine, this really helped him start a career in freestyle footballing, with all the exposure he got. But I doubt he would have ever become a success if it wasn't for Billy Wingrove. Yeah. Billy actually came from a family of footballers. His dad played for Tottenham's academy, and his cousin was actually even part of Arsenal's team, even though he never made his debut. But it wasn't easy for Billy. He had a bitter start to his career. He tried out for Tottenham's academy, but was told that he couldn't ever make it as a professional footballer because of his small physique. Hey. But he didn't let this get him down, and he went on to play for Enfield Towns Youth Club and Ware FC on a semi-professional level. Not too bad. But that wasn't all. He was also performing freestyle football shows whenever he could to make some money on the side. Billy had been freestyling for close to a decade before this. At a time when football freestyling wasn't much of a career path, he had to come to terms with the fact that going pro was not going to be his way to fame and fortune. But how was he going to differentiate himself from all the other football freestylers if he wanted to make his mark in the industry? Well, this is exactly how the F2 brand was born. 
Uh. Billy joined his close friend Jeremy to become the first football freestyling duo. They were going to captivate audiences with their choreographed freestyle performances in a new and unique way. This came at the perfect time for Jeremy, who had just finished the talent show we talked about. The idea of this group was the perfect way for him to level up his career and reach new heights. The first big highlight of their career came when they performed the opening show for the 2010 Ballon d'Or event. They performed their act in front of all the biggest players in professional football. This was the breakthrough they were looking for. The success of this performance gave them the brilliant idea to step into content creation. They released a DVD called Learn How to Football Freestyle, Volume 1. Billy and Jeremy were both talented on the ball, but Billy was the business mastermind of the group. In April of 2011, the F2 YouTube channel was born, further cementing their online brand with content that became insanely popular around the world. They had worked with some of the biggest brands and players from all over the world. They had tasted sweet success and were starting to earn a lot of money from their brands. But very soon, things were about to go sour. The group was crumbling from within, and it all became apparent during one huge event. The Wembley Cup was one of the first big YouTuber footballing events, much like the Sidemen charity match today. But the magic of the Wembley Cup was that it involved ex-football legends playing alongside famous YouTubers. (laughs) Billy and Jeremy competed in the Wembley Cup multiple times, but it was during the 2018 edition that the issues started showing. 4th of March 2018, Ah, F2 and XO, a YouTube group made up of True Geordie and Stephen Tries, were supposed to film a fun YouTube collab. But but things didn't turn out as expected. Jeremy's behaviour annoyed the EXO boys throughout the filming process. They filmed a segment of Mr. and Mrs. with the F2 boys after, and that didn't go too well either. 24th of March, the day before the big Wembley Cup match, Stephen Tries posted a diss track to the F2 boys. Classic YouTuber behaviour. He made fun of Jeremy's Batman Halloween video and threw some other funny jabs at the F2. But apparently, this didn't sit too well with Jeremy. 25th of March, the day of the Wembley Cup rolled around and the F2 won it. However, controversy occurred after the F2's team lost to F2 in the preliminary rounds. Complaining that the referee cheated by blowing his whistle early, although the squabbling would continue after Jeremy found out about Stephen Tries' diss track from the day before. And so he decided to confront him straight after the game. Yeah. Stephen Tries talked about the event on Jackmate's podcast, Happy, uh, recounting how Jeremy yeah, tried to harass him verbally, but we still didn't have the full context of the event until the 1st of September 2020 rolled around. Footage. Someone released yeah. footage of the altercation on Twitter. It showed Jeremy and his friend berating Stephen before True Geordie comes around to break it up. The clip yeah. further sent Jeremy's reputation into the ground. Most people had forgotten about his unlikable behaviour previously, but this made everything come back up. When you get that, mate, you're so, but you've got okay. no talent, bro. Oh. Where's your future going? Mate, if you do a tweet and you get 100 likes, Where, maybe I'll your tweet, to you. Fuck your tweet and your shit, you sh- bro, you're dead. You're dead, bro. Relax, man. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I'm going to get personal. Don't touch me, bro. The CEO and founder of the Wembley Cup, Spencer FC, later addressed the controversy on his podcast and revealed that the referee had indeed cheated at the expense of the F2 boys by blowing the final whistle two minutes early. The referee admitted this in an email to Spencer two years after the game. And you might be asking, why did he do that? He just didn't like the F2 boys. In that podcast, Spencer also revealed some more damning information about the F2. It turns out that behind the scenes, the F2 boys' relation was very, very rocky, and it had been for a long time. There's rumours that they have gotten rid of a lot of those businesses, and some of the reason for that is rumoured to be behind the fact that they're just not on good terms. I don't even know if they're mates, Spencer said. Jeremy and Billy had a great business relationship on camera, but their personal relationship had been in the mud for a long, long time. Things didn't get any better after this, especially for Jeremy. People started coming out with stories about their experiences working with the F2. 
and Jeremy was always at the centre of the issue. Yeah. <laughs> People hated his ego and called him extremely narcissistic. His fans started turning on him and it's pretty much stayed the same till today. Compilations of him being unpleasant have been made with many people leaving negative comments. Despite the negative press, Jeremy is still doing very well yeah. on TikTok and YouTube with almost he 7 million subscribers at this time. His content is very child oriented, so they probably yeah. aren't aware of the real persona behind the entertainment. Videos are still uploaded on the F2's channel, but we don't see Jeremy and Billy together in any videos anymore. Billy, on the other hand, is still very well liked today. He has a family channel that's doing well and was even the manager for the recent Sidemen charity game. Oh, yeah. I think we can all agree that Billy is probably better off without him. But let us know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Skiller Originals. And watch our latest video on screen. You'll love it. That was very I mean, I didn't really care about the drama before. But I mean, I, I realized that it was, I had already heard about it. Is that really what caused the end of the F2? That was like four years ago. I swear, like, they broke some record in 2021. So, I mean, clearly the end was a bit exaggerated. But I mean, it's quite funny. How all of, probably the biggest YouTube football channel going in town and going to shit because of one guy's ego. That is quite... Pretty good video.